You ever been reading a book and you come to the end of the scene that you're on and you start the new scene and all of a sudden you don't know where you are. You don't know what's happening. You don't know who the character is. Chances are the author lost you with a bad scene transition. Instead of turning around and giving you a helping hand across the chasm between two scenes, they just let you tumble in never to be seen again. That doesn't have to be how it is. As an author, we can choose to lend that helping hand or even make a beautiful bridge between scenes to help our reader across. Before I get started, I make a lot of writing related videos for YouTube, so if you're new to writing and you're trying to learn a few skills, or if you already write a lot and you're just practicing the skills you already have, or you're just procrastinating because you should be doing something else, consider hitting the subscribe button for more videos like this. So scene transitions, something I had no idea about whatsoever when I first started writing. I figured you end the scene that you're writing, you start the next one. It's not quite that simple, unfortunately, but it doesn't have to be that complicated either. So what is a scene transition? I'm not talking about the end of a chapter, I'm talking about those little gaps in the text where there's maybe two or three extra lines or sometimes there's three little stars or an empty box, something like that. If I had to define it, I'd say it's a solid change of location or point of view or time within a chapter that doesn't end the chapter. Hopefully that makes sense. If we think of a chapter as an entire TV episode, then a scene transition is exactly what it sounds like. It's connecting two scenes together. So in the first scene we might be with Jack Bauer as he sneaks into an abandoned warehouse, and in the second scene we're watching the president gaze out the windows of the Oval Office. Does the Oval Office have windows? Yes, obviously it does. So you get the picture. A scene transitions moving between two parts that are the same but different continuous but separate. So why are they important? Well, before now, I've been reading a book where a scene transition threw me off reading it completely. I put the book down, never picked it back up again. Let's not do that to readers, it's such a stupid reason to lose one. You never want to make your reader feel like your book is difficult to read. You want to whisk them away on a journey, you don't want to make them struggle to keep up with you. Instead, you can use scene transitions to keep your reader interested. You can make them exciting, you can make them add something to your book. And the good news is this isn't a skill that you're born with. It's not one of those you either have it or you don't things. It's not something that even needs a huge amount of practice. It's just something that requires a little bit of thought. That's my favorite thing about writing. It's not a live performance. You can go back over things as many times as you need to and improve them. You can definitely do this with scene transitions. So to provide an example of a bad scene transition, here's one from an early novel I wrote. So here's the first bit. If all I had to do was drag McCade along with me, it was worth it. I also thought it might have the added bonus of keeping him busy enough that he didn't drown himself in beer. Alright, that's fine, so this scene's about to change. How did I transition between the two scenes? A few days later, we were driving to get something for lunch. <sighs> oh man. By now you've probably heard of show don't tell. I wish somebody would have told me that when I was writing this scene transition. Saying time has passed is a really amateur way of moving between scenes feels pretty clunky and it doesn't seem like it's interested in keeping the reader with us or making it interesting for them. If it was a transition in film, it would probably look something like this. It's amateurish and kind of clunky. Remember the chasm example from the start of the video? Well, we haven't turned around and helped the reader over the chasm here, we've just kind of left them to their own devices and assumed they got across. So let's have a look at another one. Different book this time and um, by the way, this one's in second person. What? I was experimenting. I learned a valuable lesson. The TV's still on, but you don't remember leaving it on. Then again, you don't remember turning it off either. You hold your hand out towards the LCD screen and feel the heat leaking from it. You're glad the place didn't burn down. Okay, fine, so we're at this place, the character's house, or your house, second person, yikes. How am I gonna transition out of this? A couple of hours later, you and Casper are staring out over the dashboard towards the golf range, waiting for the lights to go off. Again? Same approach, just tell them how much time's passed. I needed to ask myself a really important question back when I was writing this. And that question would be, what's better? Telling someone about a beautiful painting or parking them in front of it and letting them look at it for themselves? This transition is admittedly better than the previous one just because it's got such solid leaving off and joining points. So we really know where we were on the previous scene and we know where we are now in the new scene. At least it has that going for it. If it was a film transition, probably look something like this. Functional, but boring. Again, if we go back to the chasm, 
we haven't really helped the reader across here. We've just made sure there's firm ground on either side for them to cross themselves. So we're still not really there. Those are the bad examples. So what about the good? I by no means claim to be a great author, but I do claim to be a better one than when I wrote those previous two books. This one's from a book I wrote last year, and I have already used this example in my quick fixes for novel writing video, which you can find up there if you haven't already watched it. If you have watched it by some miracle and you're seeing this again, apologies for repeating material. So here's the transition. In glorious, normal, understandable first person this time, thank God. Okay, so here's the first bit. Martin shrugged and cracked his knuckles as though he was about to beautifully play Beethoven on a grand piano. Question, I said. Hmm. Have you ever seen The Matrix? Okay, so we know where we are here. We're talking to Martin, who's a side character at best, and we're in the first person point of view of our character, and we're having this conversation. So we leave the scene on a really solid question. Have you ever seen The Matrix? So, what comes next? And had he? Carrie asked me at exactly seven o'clock in the warmth of a space heater in the corner of the hotel conservatory. Success, finally, it's not two hours later or the next day. This transition is far better. Yeah, I still mentioned time, but in a much more sophisticated way. And more importantly, I took a thread from the previous scene, have you ever seen the matrix? And I wove it into the new scene. That way the reader knows where they are the entire time. They can follow this train of thought all the way through. They don't even notice the scene changing around them so much. I built a bridge for them that was interesting enough that they didn't even notice they were crossing a chasm. If this was a movie transition, it'd be much more immersive than the other two. Probably something like this. The common theme here is the same, but the scene around it has totally changed. So you're not lost, you're not disconnected, you're not confused. It's overall a better transition, it's got a bit more style to it. That would be my advice. Have a common theme between two scenes and thread the two together using that theme. So learning to use more immersive scene transitions like this is a good skill to have. You don't have to use it with every scene change. In fact, don't use it for every scene change. But the odd one of these here and there really adds something. So if this video has been useful or interesting to you or it helped you kill 10 minutes or however long this is gonna turn out to be, give me a thumbs up if you'd be so kind and consider subscribing if you want more writing related videos and bad jokes. Now get back to writing. <laughs>